Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder to the first video of 2023 and the first ship review. And what a ship review it will be on the USS Newport News, which is the king of heavy cruisers and is absolutely fantastic, at least on paper. And it took me a while to gather the information, the data to make the spreadsheets and to just figure out what the ship is actually all about in naval forces in war thunder she's obviously a des moines class heavy cruiser and they are very very known well known for their firepower which basically combines the rate of fire from a light cruiser and the alpha strike capability from a heavy cruiser together with some potent armor and some aa at least on paper and uh, i all want to just uh mold this into a single video and also without further ado let's let's just put the cherry on top of this awesome video cake by including the quote-unquote five minute guide from Trakini Fell to just see what this ship is all about uh, the history basically and later on we will see each other in harbor with the actual review as usual uh, there is a link in the description to his awesome youtube channel and also there should be timestamps for the various different sections of the video. I hope you enjoy. American heavy cruiser designs of the 1930s and early 1940s had a number of distinct stages. The New Orleans class and the one off Wichita represented the efforts to stick to the naval treaty displacements. Then you had the Baltimores, which reflected what you needed to carry the fairly standard 8 inch armament of a heavy cruiser, along with the additional sensors, systems, and anti aircraft guns needed by a World War II era warship. But fundamentally, it was a treaty cruiser with the displacement limit removed. Then you had the interesting sideshow that was the Alaskas, the intermediate cruiser killer class that in role at least almost perfectly mirrored the idea behind the Invincible class 35 years earlier. But during the Alaskas design phase, a number of alternate options using 8-inch guns had been considered, using both the standard three triple turrets and another option with four such emplacements. Then, in 1942 and 43, as the Guadalcanal and then the Solomons campaigns ground on, it was felt that six-inch gun cruisers did have the rate of fire, but not necessarily the range or individual shell power needed to deal with all comers. Whilst the eight-inch gun did have the latter two, it couldn't keep up the shell output needed to quickly put down small craft or suppress larger capital ships. In May 1943, therefore, I like to imagine some Bureau of Ordnance employee, in a rare moment of usefulness, bursting into the Bureau of Ships, announcing, Your Saviour has arrived! For in his hand, he brought proposals for a rapid-fire 8-inch gun mount. This would be achieved by a number of means, including instituting the ability to load at all angles and the use of a German-style sliding breech block and brass cartridge system for the gun and its ammunition. This, along with the loading mechanisms, would require a substantial increase in weight and space over the previous system. Although this wasn't realised at first, it would turn out that the new turrets would actually weigh about 450 tonnes, as compared to the approximately 300 tonnes of the Baltimore's weapons. This, in turn, meant that an armament of nine such guns would weigh half a turret more than a ship with four conventional turrets. But, since each turret could fire about three times as fast, a cruiser equipped with 12 of the regular guns could put 40 rounds downrange per minute, whilst a nine-gun rapid-fire equipped ship could send 90 rounds after a target in the same time. Therefore, a single rapid-fire equipped ship was worth, at least in terms of overall firepower, just over two theoretical larger 12-gun vessels, or three Baltimores. Work thus began in mid-1943 on a brand new design, since adapting the existing Oregon City subclass hull was quickly shown not to be viable. The ship was, however, largely viewed as a platform for the new guns. No increase in speed was sought, nor was there any increase in the anti-aircraft armament, although the heavy anti-aircraft guns were rearranged to give the, as designed, 40mm Bofors mounts better fields of fire. Belt armour was also not increased in thickness, despite the introduction of the super-heavy 8-inch shell. 
Any improvements to armor were poured into improved subdivision, deck protection to better guard against bombs, and in extending the belt to fully cover the extended magazines that the ships would require. Three ships would be completed out of the 12 initially planned, USS Des Moines, Salem and Newport News. With the ships eventually coming in at just over 17,000 tonnes standard displacement, they were armed with nine of the 8-inch rapid-fire guns in three triple turrets, a pair super-firing forward and one aft. Twelve 5-inch 38 caliber heavy A guns were arranged in twin mounts, two per side and one at each end super-firing over the main armament. As planned, the ships would have also carried 12 quadruple 40mm bofers, but due to delays in manufacturing the main guns, by the time the ships were actually laid down in 1945, these were replaced on a like-for-like -like basis with twin 3-inch 50 caliber mounts for a total of 24 guns. Four mounts per side amidships, two at the stern next to each other, and two on the center line forward, including a very bold mount that was placed right at the bow. As completed, 12 20mm Orlicans in six twin mounts were also installed. Armour consisted of a belt with a maximum thickness of 6 inches, 3.5 inches of deck armour with a 1 inch bomb deck slightly higher, 8 inches of armour on the turret faces and 6.3 inches on the barbettes. 120,000 shaft horsepower drove four shafts for a top speed of 33 knots. As may be surmised from the year the ships were laid down, they would not see war service, launching in 1946, 47 and 48 respectively, completing in 1948 in the Des Moines case and 1949 in the case of the other two. Fairly soon after entering service, the 20mm mounts were removed as they were seen by this point as largely pointless increases in weight and manning requirements. And after some thought, the foremost 3-inch mount was also removed as it tended to spend most of its time being drenched by thrown up sea spray, a move that came much to the relief of whoever had been unlucky enough to have previously been assigned to that particular role. The number of 3-inch guns would gradually drop more and more as other systems were added to the ships, and they became most useful as flagships due to their size and speed, since the battleships were mostly in mothballs. Only Newport News would actually get to use its main guns in anger during the Vietnam War, but all three ships survived a surprisingly long time, given that they remained property of the US Navy and were the last of the gun ships in many ways. Des Moines was decommissioned in 1961 and placed in reserve, almost making it back out again alongside the Iowas, but remaining mothballed due to the costs of modernization. She was removed from the reserve list in 1993, but was only sold for scrap in 2005 after a protracted attempt to turn her into a museum ship. Whilst serving actively for the longest time, only leaving active service in 1975, Newport News would also be the first to go, being scrapped directly in 1993. USS Salem, though, turned out to be a ship of somewhat contradictions. She was the last heavy cruiser to enter service in 1949, but she was also the first of the class to be taken out of service in 1959 after only a decade at sea. But thanks to this and some effective mothballing, she was able to head over to Massachusetts in 1994, where she remains as a museum ship today. Welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed this history lesson. Now let's have a look at the USS Newport News in-game in its 1962 uh, modification. And let's start as usual with the armor. We can see we have an all or nothing armor scheme. There is no icebreaker armor. Uh, the bulkhead fore and aft are 140 millimeter of rolled cemented armor and the main belt running the full length from the first turret to the last main battery turret is 152 millimeters of rolled cemented armor. That is the best in class for all heavy cruisers. Sara has 100 150 if I'm not mistaken. Baltimore also has 152 millimeters so this is as good as it effectively goes for heavy cruisers. Um, for example the Admiral Hipper class has 80 millimeters plus a turtle back um, and the uh, Panzerschiffe, um, the Deutschland class Graf Spee has 100 millimeters so this is pretty good armor as far as heavy cruisers go. Um, 
just where the magazines are, there is an extra 102 mm rolled cemented armor plating, presumably versus diving shells, also there for the rear main magazine. And we have another extra feature, and those are those 5 inch or 127 mm bulkheads, interestingly separating the two front magazines, but not the second magazine from the 5 inch magazine. And then we have the anti-fragmentation deck armor plating of 63.5 millimeters. That's a little bit of a problem, not the least because there are some holes in it for ventilation purposes or access for the uh, ammunition. The barbettes of the main turrets are also not that bad, 160 millimeters, and um, you know, if the shell hits like here, it can deflect or will not pen, but a direct hit can penetrate and uh, do a lot of damage, slow down your rate of fire, etc. The turret faces being angled at 34 degrees of 203.2 millimeters of rolled cemented armor are also pretty good, but where the gun holdings are, it's 152 millimeters, and there are some parts where it's only 15 millimeters, so you even can get taken out by a 5 inch AG shells, which is really annoying. It will not cause a fire, but the turret's out and you have to repair. And uh, yeah, then there are the ready racks for the magazine, just uh, on the 32 millimeters of rolled cemented armor and the turrets themselves being just below 20 millimeters. And while it says rolled homogeneous armor, they can also be splashed uh, just like on a destroyer, the five inch turrets that is. So then let's have a look in the X-ray and we see that the front magazine as well as the rear magazine are comfortably below the waterline. There are the ready racks in the turrets, the shells, and so that it can also detonate with a direct hit, but the front and the rear magazine aren't the problem. The problem is this magazine, because as you might see, here's the waterline. This is above the waterline and exactly below the armored deck actually touching it and um, either some shells are above the armor plating or uh, some shrapnels go through. <clears throat> I don't know what actually causes this but this area is really vulnerable and you really should take care of not getting hit there in the first place. And when this uh, magazine blows up the front magazine will not blow up but the five inch magazine. So you see the big weakness of the USS Newport News. So let's start with some statistics and let's start with the guns. As you can see, this is the only heavy cruiser of battle rating 6.3 in this comparison. All other heavy cruisers are 5.7 or 6.0 in this comparison. And we have nine of the fantastic 8 inch 55 Mark 16 cannons with 1350 rounds of ammunition, which is the most in this comparison and we have by far the shortest reload of six seconds in reality those were autoloaders in game or even the autoloaders require crew skill don't ask me why uh, i have to post somewhere and it's ridiculous however we have actually an effective shell dpm of 90 rounds in the air every minute that is fantastic. That is head and shoulders above everything else. The IJN Mogami, it is more than double what you get from the Admiral Hippa. It is triple what you get from the RN Zara. And it even leaves the USS Baltimore, which has very similar guns and turrets, also in the dust with nearly three times that DPM. We also have some other friends in the statistics and those are the SMS Fondatan and the HMS Invincible that share the battle rating of 6.3 and they have an anemically bad shell DPM but they aren't firing 8 inch guns are they? So with that impression that means that you have a higher DPM than a lot of the light cruisers in this game and um, 
you overcome therefore one of the big problems of for example the Sahara or the Baltimore and that means that you just can't overwhelm the enemies while they spew shells a lot of while they spew a lot of shells back at you for example 150 rounds of 6 inch shells from a fully upgraded Helena that is annoying here you can shoot back 90 shells per minute is the same DPM that you generate from the three frontal turrets of a Helena. Fantastic. Let's move on. So first let's talk about the torpedoes or rather the lack of thereof. And a lot of the other ships have torpedoes. They might be good, they might be bad, but at the end of the day they have it. Even the Fondertan and the HMS Invincible. Now that means that at this battle rating you cannot really threaten anything coming around the corner if it has a lot of armor and you will see a lot of this stuff in your battles because of your battle rating of 6.3 you face very often um seven point zeros and when a uh, shan horse comes around the corner that ain't fun that ain't fun. If you are in, for example, a Hippa, which never would fight that ship, but nonetheless, just for the argument, you at least have some torpedoes at your disposal to threaten it or to at least um, kill it from the grave. The Newport News doesn't have this luxury. However, she's also a heavy girl, topping at nearly 21,000 tons, and the top speed is also not bad with 61 km per hour, but there are faster boats such as the Maxim Gorky. The crew amount is really high with just under 1,800, however, you lose them also really quick. When your magazine blows up, when you get farmed by HE, you know, doesn't really matter how much crew you have, there are enough splinters for everybody. So let's move on and let's talk about the ammunition. So let's start with talking about the stock shell. And yes, it is a stock shell because this ship comes at you completely stock and you have to grind with it. And to be honest, there could be worse stock ammunition than the 8 inch Mark 14 common SAP round. And it has not a lot of penetration. Um, falling off to 80 millimeters at 5 kilometers but you have at least a f just below 5 kilogram bursting charge and um, that usually is good enough to really get in the damage together with your secondaries to which we will come in just a moment versus other light cruisers even heavy cruisers you will not really have the same choice as when you're fully upgraded but you know it's War Thunder you're welcome so it's definitely better than a stock plain HE shell. As a tier 1 upgrade, you get then the 8 inch Mark 21 AP CBC round. And that shell is really interesting because it has 762 meters per second mass velocity, 2.21 kilogram of TNT equivalent bursting charge, and 390 millimeters of penetration at a kilometer distance, and at 10 kilometers, 207 millimeters. What does that mean? Well, Glad you asked. Let me answer this question with some more stats. Yay! So what you basically are looking at is the visualization of all the stat cards from all the AP rounds from all the ships. And we're looking here at the penetration of the armor piercing rounds at zero degrees angles of attack or when the shell hits the armor plate at flat 90 degrees. And um, unsurprisingly, the Fondertan's 11 inch and the Invincible's 12 inch guns are head and shoulders above everybody else at the start. Then we have the Maxim Gorky's 180 millimeter and the Hippas 8 inch guns. And then the Newport News is basically the third worst ship, very close to the Sarah's APHE BC rounds. However, this changes over distance and at 15 kilometers, that's on the very right hand side, you basically have still the Invincible um, together with the Maxim Gorky's wannabe magic shells. Then you have the Admiral Hippers and very close to it, basically the fourth in place, is the New Newport News Mark 21 AP CBC round. However, the penetration isn't that great at that distance, unsurprisingly, and uh, also you will not very often hit something at zero degrees angles of attack or flat 90 degrees on. So let's have the same graph at 
60 degrees angles of attack or 30 degrees of impact. And here we have a vastly different picture. Basically, the Newport News being the bottom blue line being the worst. Unsurprisingly, again, the 11 and 12 inch shells being very much head and shoulders above everybody else. But then the picture turns quite a bit. Whereas the Mogami was previously one of the worst, it's now very much the best. And the Sara is second in place, which was previously also one of the worst. And then after this, we have the Invincible and together with the Maxim Gorky again. Then comes the Admiral Hipper and then we have the Newport News. And so you kind of see that the myth of the super heavy AP easily penetrating all sorts of deck armor. Well, it's certainly not true in this data. And um, I want to show you one more picture before we go back to the gameplay. So this is a screenshot from a replay that I took and what you're looking at is an incoming 8 inch shell from the left with the green tracer from a distance of 13 kilometers and let's have a look at the angle. And I would say that's somewhere between 10 to 12 degrees and that is not a lot when you consider it impacting on flat deck plating. So plunging fire with those shells realistically in War Thunder, not happening. The third shell type is the HE that you get as a tier 2 upgrade and that is the 8 inch Mark 25 HC with 9.5 kilograms of TNT equivalent bursting charge creating 61 millimeters of penetration at all distances versus every angle. It can create fire, it can splash all the open AA mounts and it can also create flooding but to be honest it's not the really that effective versus the majority of targets that you face, even destroyers. You should preferably use either the AP or the SAP. And finally, we have the full shell, which is a tier 4 upgrade, and that is the 8 inch Mark 17 SP common SAP round. And that is rather similar to the stock SAP round. It basically has more pen for a little bit less of TNT equivalent bursting charge. 823 meters per second mass velocity, uh, 4.61 kilograms of bursting charge, and you have 131 millimeters of pen, and at 5 kilometers 95 and at 10 kilometers 66 that's good for really um, blasting all the internals of the weakly protected parts basically going through anti-fragmentation armor but it's actually not that important to get compared to the stock round let's briefly also talk about the secondaries because they are quite impressive on the uss newport news you have overall 12 127 millimeter or 5 inch 38 mark 12 cannons with uh, 4320 rounds of ammunition and a impressive reload of 2.8 seconds no other secondary mount is that impressive and um, for every given broadside of eight guns due to the placement of the secondaries you can effectively have in addition to your 90 rounds of eight inch guns 171 rounds of five inch 38s in the round in in the air that is impressive and combine this with your radar and you have quite the scary AA screen if you do it manually that is the final statistics are the shells for the secondaries. We have basically two types. We have the SAP round from the Moffat, 150 millimeters of penetration, 900 grams of TNT equivalent bursting charge, just under 800 meters per second, mass velocity, good for close quarters scenarios versus destroyers if your main guns can't traverse or to just get in the additional damage versus a heavy cruiser or light cruiser but what i mostly use are the hevt rounds the good old fly swatters 36 millimeters of penetration from the hevt round with 3.22 kilograms of tnt equivalent bursting charge with also a mass velocity of just under 800 meters per second it causes flooding and fires it can break some light modules and just wreck the superstructure and also can knock out the open top aa mountings and the additional a DPM from this is quite scary, especially versus aircraft with your radar addition. And uh, that's all the statistics that I have for you today. Let's come to the summary 
for this ship. Now let's talk about the final verdict for the USS Newport News in its 1962 configuration. And uh, it's a little bit of a glass sledgehammer, but it also has some disadvantages compared to its on paper advantages. First of all, the good things. Um, you have really great firepower. The DPM of the main guns is insane. So double check. Then the armor, best in class effectively, check. Speed, it's not that bad, it's not the fastest, but I'll give it still a check. You have also quite scary AA, the combination of proximity fuses or VT fuses with a radar, with that uh, many shells in the air, quite effective. And uh, yeah, you have supposedly an autoloader. But the reality is that this ship is highly vulnerable when it comes to its second second main magazine from the super firing turret that reduces the fun quite considerably and makes you very much vulnerable then uh, when your secondaries are bind to the main guns like i do um, then you basically have no other aa so you have to manually then go and hunt down those aircraft and when you're in a gunfight with another ship you have to decide. So one of the potentially best AA ships in the game is hindered by how Gaijin implemented this because there is no simple button that you just can release your uh, secondaries to do the AA duty. That's a bit sad. And um, then there is your shell consumptions. You have 1350 rounds. So technically that allows you to constantly fire for 15 minutes and then you're out of ammunition. Now that doesn't really sound too bad. However, you have to consider a few, f a few things here. First of all, this really reduces your effectiveness in enduring confrontations or even in conquest modes where the battles can last for longer than 15 minutes. And especially if you wanna take two thirds of your ammunition uh, of purely AP and then some HE and SAP for the various different situations, that reduces it down to 10 minutes versus the Hipper has potentially 28 minutes of pure uh, Daka Daka time, Mogami 24 minutes and even the Helena with its insane DPM can fire uh, its 3000 rounds off in 20 minutes. Um, so when you are not in the optimal position don't shoot, save some ammo, you might need it later, and you expend it faster than you think. Um, but even so, you have more DPM even if you lose the uh, second magazine. The big problem is the battle rating with 6.3. Especially at distance, you have no chance versus the various different battlecruisers, uh, Großkreuzer, battleships, you name it. And you can face them very often. And even when you face, again, a normal heavy cruiser or even light cruiser, they just can detonate your magazine if one of the shells just looks wrongly at the second magazine. So this is also frustrating. Whatever, you also have no float plane. And that is also quite the problem because you then rely on a patrol boat or somebody else launching that plane. Now, the final thing is here, the economy. And well, this ship has a repair cost of 30,000 civil lines fully upgraded. That is hefty. However, you also have quite the civil line income modifier of 6.0. That is three quarters of the Moffat, the Helena, you name it. In other words, you have a 900% civil line income if you have a premium account and 600% without a premium account. That is quite a lot. A couple of kills and you will get out of the, out of the battle with no net loss. And that makes you a potential candidate for a tier 5 self-made premium. This is a reward ship not a premium, but it has enough civil line income modifier to make it such. And the, um, the talisman costs 2,100 golden eagles. I say this because there are currently no rank five premiums, but eventually we will see rank six, and then you have a ship to go and farm. 
if you like the playstyle of this ship and um, it has the potential to do this and because it's uh, non-premium uh, but if you put a, a talisman on it and you will get the same amount of rp like with the helena you reach the ace status much faster than if you would play an actual premium so that is highly interesting the rate of fire is amazing the ship the ship lives and dies by this um at the end of the day it comes down to if you like what you saw in the background if you are really into naval and to be honest at some point we will see eventually another uh, des moines class in the game in the tech tree as a premium or whatever but for collectors i think that the uss newport news will eventually have quite the value on the marketplace just look at what the uss baltimore's price um, development was over time it's promising um, to be honest this is the king of heavy cruisers having to fight battle cruisers and battleships and your eight inch guns sometimes just don't cut it yes sure if an invincible uh, doesn't look at you and comes brought that on yeah you're having fun and this is basically how you have to play the ship as an ambush attacker come out blast them into oblivion uh, before they can turn the turrets knock out the turrets knock out the bridge then go for the for the guts you know the machinery maybe if the magazine is hittable take the magazine and kill it reverse back into cover that's that's not so easy because on conquest etc there is no cover and even if there is cover you have to get there in the first place and a lot of people really know that you are a juicy target so that's the uss newport news that is effectively the end of the video and i hope that you enjoyed it i hope that you kind of value the effort that i put in to making it um, by subscribing hitting the like button hitting the bell and also let me know if you want to see more of those videos this kind of detailed information this kind of statistical analysis if that is something that you never really saw it like that if this just changes your view of naval forces let me know in the comment section and as usual we will see each other on the battlefields in the skies and on the waves of war thunder